I come from generations of farmers in West Wales and I was at Ardwin Grammar School, the local state school, which is a co-ed. Uh, I had, didn't have an idea what I wanted to do. I was kind of merrily going on to do A-levels. Um, I knew I wanted to go to university. My mother was particularly keen that I would get qualifications, as she called them, so that I'd become financially independent. And I wanted to see uh, the careers officer, as he was called, a male teacher, who was spectacularly, I think, unqualified to be a careers master. And he would see all the six formers and then ask us what we wanted to do. And I floated the idea that I might become a lawyer, perhaps even a barrister. Not that I really knew what a barrister did. And uh, he was very helpful because he immediately poo-pooed the idea and told me, oh no dear, a most unsuitable choice for a woman. Much better to be a teacher or a nurse, he said. It'll fit in with childcare. And so, perversely, of course, I immediately then determined that I was going to be a lawyer and, if at all possible, a barrister. I was uh, in a co-ed. Nobody ever suggested to me until that moment that I would have any difficulty having equality with the boys or that anybody would discriminate against me in any way. So perhaps that was the first hint that life wasn't going to be quite plain sailing. But it was only when I reached uh, Liverpool University and the Faculty of Law, and on my first day, the shock of discovering that there were 110 of us in that year, the first years, only 10 of us were women. And a few weeks later, I discovered that we women, the 10, had had to have significantly higher grades than any of the men. I particularly wanted chambers in Cardiff because my husband was a medical student here and we wanted to be together. And I was told by one chambers in particular they had a policy of not taking women or members of the minority ethnic background. So I, was, I found that I was not getting anywhere trying to uh, get pupillage. But I was told that there was a post coming up uh, as a court clerk, a legal advisor at the Cardiff Magistrates Court. I applied and got that post, and that's how I ended up in the Magistrates Court Service, where I remained for 19 years, um, for various reasons, as I got promoted and ended up having my own Magistrates Court in South East London. Um, there never seemed really a good moment then to go back and try to get back into chambers to practice as a barrister. So that took on, a, my career took a, a direction of its own in public service. It was a disappointment that you couldn't become what you were hoping to be, which was a, an advocate standing on your feet in court. But I have to say, when I joined the Magistrates Court Service, what you realised, of course, is that you were actually working as a lawyer, because you were advising lay magistrates, you were playing up an important part in a uh, role in the courtroom itself, you were meeting people, dealing with a variety of work, and I actually loved it. And um, I was given opportunities um, to get involved in training uh, of, of magistrates. But also, as I progressed, um, I actually found that I really enjoyed the work, the responsibility. When I became clerk to the justices, I had my own court to run with over 100 magistrates, 40 staff, a budget. And so, you know, it, I was only about 29, 30 at the time when I became, to have that responsibility. So the challenges, it was fascinating. I was one of the few female clerks of the justices in the country and um, my husband had moved to London to do medical research and so I wanted to follow him and, and so you seize your opportunity where it comes. Um, we don't have children and I do think one of the things that helped me is that I wasn't perhaps as tied as some women are you know, to family commitments, caring commitments and so I had that freedom to move and take up opportunities. Firstly, I was invited to become a member of the Magistrates Committee on the Judicial Studies Board, a national role, which led to be, to be uh, involved in the implementation of the Children Act uh, and to serve on a Butler Sloss Committee. So um, I found that opportunities came to develop skills and um, get involved on a national level, which of course adds another dimension to your work. 
by a local level, the local um, Crown Court was uh, Croydon. And the judge there, Her Honour Judge Ian Graham Hall, suggested to me that I should look for a judicial post part-time, become a Deputy District Magistrate's Court um, judge. But if she hadn't suggested that I might be capable of doing a judicial job, I would never have dreamt of going um, down that line. I was sworn in by the then Lord Chief Justice, Peter Taylor, at his uh, court, at the Royal Courts of Justice. And just in case that that gave me a false sense of my importance, I was then wafted by taxi down to Camberwell Green Magistrates Court, where I spent the day dealing with non-payment of television licences. So I said from one end of the legal firmament to the other in one short taxi ride. I ended up uh, sitting in Westminster at Bow Street Magistrates Court, historic court of course, and Horsby Road. And that was particularly interesting because um, I was, as they call, ticketed. I was allowed to do extradition work and terrorist work, which was um, specialist and quite high powered. But you'd find yourself in a day at Bow Street, at one minute you were dealing with prostitutes, beggars, people who were pickpockets, and the next moment, there'd be General Pinochet in the court, you know, um, with an application to extradite him. <laughs> I made my application to sit on the Wales uh, and Chester circuit, as it was known then, because by then my husband was a doctor working in Cardiff. So I was kind of trying to engineer my way back, I suppose, um, to, to, to Wales. Um, I sat for a couple of years as a recorder and then I applied and I became a full-time circuit uh, judge back here in Wales, sitting uh, principally uh, in Merthyr, doing mainly crime, although I was also, even as a site in London and here, I was also doing family work, sitting, uh, dealing with family cases for about a third of my time. But the decisions you're taking there, it seems to me, are some of the most important any judge anywhere can take because the decisions you're making about, for example, removing a child from its birth family, placing a child for adoption, is not going to, um, is not a matter of a sentence of a couple of years. You're talking about a, something that's going to affect that child throughout its life and the family. But I also enjoy the criminal work, uh, dealing with complainants and witnesses and defendants. They come in all shapes and sizes. If you, if you enjoy working and you're interested in people, I think dealing both family work and criminal work is very um, satisfying. I'd been a circuit judge about nine, eight, nine years, uh, and uh, I was thinking that probably I'd got as far as I would dream of going. And the post came up of uh, being the senior circuit judge in crime in Wales, which is the recorder of Cardiff, and responsible for um, three major court centres. Um, I, again, the same old demons, I'm not good enough, it's, you know, um, counting all the reasons why I shouldn't be applying for this post, thinking that there were other male colleagues who would be more suited uh, and again, um, a senior judge came up to me and said, why aren't you applying? And again, that little push. Um, and uh, with that encouragement, I went for it. And to my astonishment, I got it. And um, uh, I'm told that some of the local female members of the bar were running around the court saying, here come the girls, here come the girls. And I was told, somebody suggested that I should be known as the frock, that is, the first female recorder of Cardiff. Perhaps the way we operate in court may be different from some of our male colleagues. And of course, I think there's been a change in the way male judges operate as well, as uh, younger judges are appointed, they come from a different generation, different expectations. And I think society probably changes us as well as to the way that we conduct proceedings, um, having regard to the need to respect diversity in the people 
in front of us. You know, whether it be race, ethnicity, whether it be religion, uh, language, we have to receive training as to how to reflect uh, and uh, show sensitivity to those who appear before us. Um, so I think judges have changed to reflect the changes in society. I count myself enormously lucky to have had the career I had. I've enjoyed every day and I pinch myself, you know, when I come up those steps in the morning, that when I entered those in 1975, came up those steps, I was the most junior person in this building and I never, ever dreamt that I could say I'm now the most senior person in the building. That, that is a, a journey I would never have seen myself making. So it's a bit of a miracle, I think.